and welcome back. Today we're going to sort out some of the little things that we've been neglecting, or more that I've been neglecting, I shan't bring you into this. I want to finish off some of the paths up here and tidy everything up, maybe bring this path down towards where we're going to build the docks, and I think one of the big jobs I'm going to do today, we'll come through here, run run run, is tidy up all of this so that I can put the docks in here eventually, so I think I'll do landscaping all of this hillside this week. Big terraforming job. I'll hollow out all of this so that when it's a dock, boats can be moored. I nearly said mowed. Boats can be moored in here, fix whatever's going on down here, and turn all of this into some pretty terraformed scenery that matches the cliffs and some of the other little bits of terraforming that we've done around here. Since it will be a dock for traders, it might be nice to also include some kind of storage room here. It might be quite nice to make a little storage area that matches the original gatehouse. So it's a smaller one, but it'll kind of echo the design of something down here. Maybe bring this hilltop along like that, so that this is an opening with the hill and then some cliffs behind. Whilst editing the previous video, I was waiting up by my sugarcane farm whilst letting all of my farms tick over, especially the auto wool farm. But realised that every time I wanted to check on something and make sure that it was going alright, I had to run all the way down here, all the way around here, and then in through this one to get to the wool farm. So I decided to cut my way through and make this little side tunnel. And there we are, that's a much faster way of getting between the Oh That's a much faster way of getting between the two sets of farms. But I've not decorated it yet. It's just a load of stone. So my first job I think is going to be to tidy up this, to decorate it and to maybe turn it into an overspill storage room because as big as my initial storage room is, it is already running out of room. I've already got some overspill. These were decorative chests that I put in here when I first built it, but they're already filling up with stone and dirt mostly. So I'll make a little extra storage room and connect up the tunnels. It would be quite nice to have this a big kind of network of tunnels back here rather than being forgotten or ignored. I have lots of little farms noodled away in here. So I'll tidy this up using all of the previous kind of decoration stones. I'll use some cobble and some mossy cobble and the dripstone and all this and match it up with this kind of design that I've got in these tunnels and we'll get it looking all nice and pretty and then we'll move on with the rest of the projects for today. And I'm in the mood to do this, so I'm going to do it. And I know that storage could be eased up significantly by going to get more shulker boxes, but honestly, I am just not in the mood for that. It's one of those things I've really got to be in the mood to do. I find it very annoying. But for now, we shall just have some overspill storage, and one day I will go back to the end and I will get a bajillion shulker boxes. <laughs> done. It's quite dark, it's quite cosy, I quite like it. This is my kind of build, I like things to be all sort of secret. But no, I've left in a lot of texture, I've included quite a few different stone types, we've got little patches of tuff and we've got patches of the dripstone, some greenery of course, you know what I'm like. And the storage is as it is in the main storage hall, it's heaps on the floor. I know some people like great big walls of organised shelves and boxes but I do like the heaps on the floor look, I think it just looks way more in keeping with how busy villagers would actually store things. They'd have important things up on shelves, all prioritised. But the other stuff I had, they'd just chuck it in heaps. We've all done it. But there we are, just a simple addition to the storage room. I did say before that I'd quite like to try and take this tunnel all the way through to the mines. I don't know how much I'm going to be able to do that, if at all. And I'm probably going to have to do it from here. But this is a bit awkward. I don't know if at some point this will get cleared, so it opens out into this part of the storage room and then from here we have a diagonal that goes up to the mines. 
In which case, I don't really know what I'm going to do with the farm. I don't know if I'll maybe move this along or if I'll swap these guys to be on this side, because there is a bit more space back there. I could swap them over to being behind. We'll figure things out. As I know where the mines are going to be and I know which mine I'm going to prioritise, I will then cut a tunnel through. It would be quite nice to have a tunnel going all the way decorated like this to those mines and then continue that sort of decoration all the way through. I have, of recent months, really come to love gravel. I like the fact that it's so close to the stone in colour, but it also has just enough pink in it that it kind of ties it into granite. So it looks quite good next to, admittedly, quite ugly granite. And then it also looks good next to stone, so it acts as a nice midway between the two. Previously, I'd never really used granite because it was just too gross. I don't know, this, this kind of makes me more comfortable using it and feeling like it's nice in a build for once. It also goes well with spruce. Again, it, it alone is not brilliant. Something quite fleshy about it, which I just don't like. I use it in moderation. Same with the dripstone. Just a bit of dripstone in a corner, a bit of granite in a corner. I should really at some point include some diorite because I have been neglecting that. And I don't mind diorite, it's just that it doesn't really blend with anything. It's so kind of on its own. The calcite helps. Calcite really helps blend it in with other things, but yeah, yeah it's a bit too bold on its own. It always looks very out of place with the other blocks. Anyway, on with other jobs. Now, if I'm wanting to continue this path all the way down here and then down to the docks... Oh, there's another Enderman. Wow, okay. If I want to continue this path all the way down to the docks, I'm going to need some more mud because I do not have anything like enough mud. I think I've only got about three blocks left over, if that. But I also, at some point, need to deepen the river and clear out all of this stuff. What I think I'll do is I'll turn a good chunk of this into mud before I harvest it up. Come on. Oosh. Just do this for a little bit, clear out some of this area. Get it. I would like to get it down to this depth. I don't think I can make that mud all the way down, partly because I don't think that's dirt all the way down. It will hit stone eventually. But once you hit past the, the layers that you've already cleared, it's no longer a source block, so you can't just... It's no longer a source block of water, I should say. So you can't just spam the dirt. It will eventually hit a point where you have to swim up to get water and then come back down and swim up to get water and come back down. There maybe is a way around that. You can maybe turn it into source blocks, but it's still a bit of a path. There we are. Just cleaned out this little bit and a couple of the flat bits on here. And it's got... And I got just shy of five stacks of mud out of it. So that will do for now. I'll gather some more as I clear out this whole area and I'll maybe even try and bring this down to this level because obviously this already has some depth. So it will save me quite a bit of digging. If I can use some of this, I'll just have to clear out this channel, even it out a little bit and then match it up to the river. I would love to install a conduit for this and have water breathing full time while I'm down here, but uh, unfortunately the wandering traders have not once had Nautilus in stock. So even though I've got two hearts of the sea, I am nowhere near getting a conduit. Very annoying. Pretty sure you can get Nautilus shells either through fishing or through drowned, but I don't really want to get them that way because that sounds terribly boring. So on with clearing. Yeah, done. Nice big deep part of the river. Oh look, a squid. This isn't the final layout, but it's a good starting point. I will go in, I will add some more texture to the rocks, I will maybe add some brickwork down here to make it look like it's been deliberately reinforced. And uh, yeah, I'll eventually go in and put a dock here, but I think for the rest of the day I'm going to focus on building the storage area here, and the path and all the connection stuff that's going to connect it up to the rest of the, the village, the city, whatever this is. Digging all this out didn't actually take as long as you'd think. I think the whole thing took about an hour. Would have been a bit better if I'd had the, uh, the conduit, and certainly would have been better if I'd had a beacon, which I should really go get one one day. I suppose if I'm planning to stay in this world for as long as I was, you know, talking about last episode, it might be beneficial to actually set up a little sort of wither skull farm so I can have tons of beacons all over the place. That'll be better than having just one that I move around. But that is a job very much for another day. I'm very much not in the mood for that anytime soon also need to do some research on how to make a small scale with a skull farm. I don't need hundreds of beacons. I would just like, you know, maybe one or two per settlement. So depends how many settlements we come to do. Anyway, 
this, the storage room. So I need to clear this, I need to clear out the dirt here, but I think first I'm going to build just like a little a rough estimation of where the roof is going to go, so I've got a scale of how big this is going to be. I don't want it to be as big as the other one, but I don't want it to be tiny either. I would quite like it to be this sort of size. First things first, chop the trees. This is quite short, so I won't really time lapse this, I'll just, just chop them. Now if I come here, get some dirt, this will do for now. Click it, thank you. I can start mapping in where I'm going to put the roof. Start it round here, I think. Actually, no, further forwards than that. Further, oh, floaty block. Thank you. Yeah, round here, probably. I think I want it a little, I don't want it too in line with that harsh edge, I don't think. Yeah, that's all right. Okay, so it's a smidge blocky at the moment, but that is a good kind of indication of what I'm after. How big is that compared to the other one? Yeah, it just seems fairly similar. I might have to make it a bit smaller. Although I quite like it being that big. Yeah, that, no, that seems quite fitting. Good, yeah, no, I'll leave that. I think I'm going to put the grass hilltop on first and then fill in the interior, because the interior doesn't matter, it just needs to be a bit higgledy. Higgledy piggledy. I can clear out all of this once I'm done. Yeah, hilltop first. Just need a lot more dirt. The roof is on and we've got an idea of how big this is going to be. It's a little, it's a little flat out of the hillside, it might need a bit more shaping up here. But I left it, um, I left the game running while I went for lunch and the, the grass has grown in nicely. Now you can see here, with this other gate, that I have filled in the walls with stones and made these kind of cliff edges. So I'm going to do the same here, I'm going to, I'm going to close in the edges with stone. Maybe because this is, this is a bit more kind of deliberately built, and this is a bit more on the edge, this might be a little bit more like the cliffs that are up there, a bit more cobble and a bit more broken up. But yes, we'll wall in the sides, I will clear out the middle, and then I'll actually build the intended gatehouse bit. It might end up going up a ramp a little bit because this has ended up taller than I thought it was going to be. It's going to get a ceiling in, which will lower it a little bit. I don't know that I want it to be from here to that height though. I think maybe more from like here to that height might be better. Before I start building though, I might do some resource gathering, as in using my fortune pick to go through all of these resources that I have already gathered. I've got so much coal, but I've also got a lot of ores that need smelting, so I, I might just do that and that can get going in the background to set up my little smelter again. There we are. Everything on this side is what I've just mined. So, lots of coal and some good iron. I will now just get those smelting. Also, 63 diamonds. I'll take that. Very nice, thank you. I have so many axolotls now. And I still can't remember which colours I've got, so I just keep grabbing them. I could probably set this up somewhere more permanent, because I keep just taking it down and rebuilding it. Maybe make it its own room one day, make it bigger. I use it a lot more than I thought I would, so probably a good thing in the long run. I also found some deep slate coal ore, which... I thought it was very rare. I'm not sure if it's even been taken out of some of the later ones. I'm still on 1.19. I haven't updated past that point. I got it working. I didn't need anything from the updates, so if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I've hung on to that for now because I'll use that maybe for decorating. If it's that rare, it might be quite nice to put in a forge, have it as like part of the floor or something, rather than just turning it into coal. Anyway, we'll make a proper start on this thing now. Get in, put those walls in, and then clear the floor. the inside hollowed out. I just need to actually put the interior in now. It is a little taller than anticipated. I 
could really do to put the roof in first and the floor in just to figure out how tall it actually is going to be by the time it's all done. Probably going to ramp it up a little bit to maybe about here. Maybe this one. This, this seems better. Yeah, it, it's kind of on the right track. It's a bit bigger than I thought it was going to be. I'm probably going to have to adjust the hill as well. Although maybe not. I don't mind the fact that it sticks out a little bit. Yeah, it's a bit square. I don't know what to do about that. Once it's got the gateway frontage on, similar to this one, it will probably look like it's meant to be like that. It will look a bit better, but uh, at the moment it looks a bit weird. It's only halfway through, if that. Would you like to see something funny? Of course you would. I was using TNT to clear some of the bigger spaces and, well, yeah, I fell in. That went well. This is done. It'll get some more decoration on the top at some point, but for now, as a storage room, this bit is done. It's far bigger than I intended it to be. It is quite open plan. I don't mind how it came out, but it's just not what I intended when I started, as has become the fashion here. But rows of storage, rows of storage there, and then again, I personally preferred heaps on the floor. And down here, we have a little, little working area with a saw and a bench and crafting tables. Just a cute little working area. There are also these kind of spoil heaps in the corners. There's one here of like stone and rubble, and there's one over here of all the copper that they've moved when clearing this place out. I did originally have the floor kind of drop back down because I wanted these to be visible and not have to move them, which is part of why this one still dipped in a little bit. But I decided I just did not like that. I just woke up at like four in the morning and thought, nope, change that. And so I did. And if I want to go back at any point to add more caves, I can just move this little bit out of the way and I can put another cave in here have more tunnels. I might even connect it up to the main base via tunnels out the back, have the whole thing connected back here. But yes, this, this took far longer than I thought it was going to, partly because it ended up bigger than intended, and partly because it's on a par size-wise with that one, which I only remembered again when this one was like 80% done. I actually did that in two episodes, so me trying to cram this one into one episode probably was not the best choice, but well, like I say, I didn't intend for it to be this big. I am happy with how it's come out though, I'll put something on the top, not quite sure what. Since this is a storage building and it is by the docks, it might have a crane or two up here. It might not. 
We'll see what works. By the time I come to put the docks in and we've got a ship down here with its mast and everything, putting a crane or a lighthouse or something up here might actually like, overcrowd this area. But at the moment, I'm trying to avoid doing... I think that's part of what annoys me about this bee house area with the, um, the kennels and the statue and then there's the bee house there. I think it's just a little bit too full compared to everywhere else. I think that's kind of what annoys me about that. So hopefully it'll not annoy me as much once we get the rest of the hillside filled in. Now this is bigger than intended and it perhaps looks a little too equal to the original in size and I think the solution to that is to actually build a third one. To put a third one maybe there-ish at some point. I did want to put something around here, I didn't want this to just be hillside. So having a third one continues that shape and that pattern around to this side into this weird little broken up hillside bit here will probably work quite well. What it'll be for, I don't know. I don't think it necessarily needs to be for anything, I think just, just a storage room or... Just a workshop is absolutely fine if it's around villagers. This is still the main one with the uh, more elaborate decoration and the storage that I consistently use. I will end up using the other storage as overflow, but uh, this is the one that I will primarily come back to. So now I think I just need to finish this path, connect it up, and I'll get a better idea of the space that I'm going to have around here to put extra things in. I mentioned last week about the wolf statue. That might still go there. I think it might look quite nice against this, depending on how it's situated and framed. What I might end up doing, because when I come to put the dock in here, I don't have a design for the dock yet so I can't do it just now, when I come to put the dock in it's going to be slightly elevated so that people can get into the ships that are going to be here. So what I might do is take this stairway out so that it's level with that dock, so this is like the way in, stuff gets sorted in the storage room and then when it comes out it comes out via this one. From an execution point that might be a sensible way of using the space. Or vice versa, if someone wishes to load something into a ship, it would go in that way, get sorted, and then come back out onto the docks. Anyway, paths. More path done. More path done. Don't know what else to say, singing a little song. Yep, here's a little path done. Just sweeps around. We've got a nice big open flat bit here. Don't know what I'll do here. I've just made it grassy for now because I like grass. I like the fluffiness. Fluffy. I did some hedges because it makes the edges look more deliberate. It's not just that the blocks stop here. It also is that the path is guiding you this way. No, nope, there we are. Not much else to say about that. I might put some more of these around because I've got these everywhere. It's become a bit of a, a bit of a trademark of the area. Yeah. I've just made this little barrier for now just because I haven't actually done anything with the dock here. I've just made this little lip. This will get removed and a proper something will get put here. Not sure what yet, still got to do the design. That's why I haven't done the uh, the decoration down here either. I was going to put in the bricks and the cobble and make it all pretty, but uh, I've just left it for now. This project has taken far longer than intended and far longer than I had planned for today. So that can all just get done together as one big dock build. Now the last thing I was going to do today was connect this path up to the bees, but that's actually quite a complicated thing to do. Do I want to do that today? This bit's fine. It's then coming down this hill because it's going to have to come this way. And do I want to do that just yet when there's a possibility that I might be altering or moving that? So I might leave it for now. What I could do though instead is finish off that one tiny bit of path that's just down here that connects the village to the main path because the bees were in the way. The bees have since been moved. So let's just do this. A few bits of path into here so that it sort of melts into the next one. I might convert this to the uh, the mud path at some point, but for now I'm just leaving it as the dirt track. There we are. Simple path. Just in. Put the bits back. That seems okay to me. I feel like I've done a lot this episode, so I'm actually going to call it here. Now there won't be an episode next week because I am actually going to take this week off just for the holidays to chill a little bit. But when we come back I think we're going to work on the docks and we're going to try and get some designs going in there. Since we have multiple docks in this area and they are actually quite staple to the whole build, I will probably work on the designs for those over this uh, holiday period. So then we can actually make some progress. Whatever your plans for this holiday period, I hope you have fun, I hope you travel safely and I will see you in the new year. Bye bye for now.